Hey, this is James, the non-professional, back with another episode of Draw, Draw, Draw. And today we're going to be drawing Thor. Now, this isn't a full profile, but a sort of a profile, I guess. He's more toward he, he's more turned towards the front. Um, but anyways, so these are the type of figures that I started drawing when I first initially started drawing comic books. Uh, as opposed to like the, the thinner, more athletic looking Batman, I, I drew these big hulking stout figures uh, like the, the Supermans and the Incredible Hulks. Um, these are the figures that help me put together a method to, I guess, sort of put the anatomy together and figure out proportions and stuff like that. Anyways, we're in the uh, rough stage right now. Just as I said before, keep it really loose and just try to figure out what you actually want in, in the design of this uh, this picture, uh, the, the concept of what it is that you're trying to achieve. And don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to redo. Uh, Y'all didn't see it here because I edited it out, but I actually had to redraw that hammer like a hundred times uh, because I just couldn't get the angle right without it essentially covering up the back of his head and I want the back of his head covered up so I kept having to turn it turn it turn it turn it turn it and finally I came up with the, that angle there and you know I think it turned out pretty good even though the handle itself when you see it going through his fist it looks sort of crooked like the the head of the hammer is just is not sitting perfectly straight or perfectly at a right angle on top of the uh, the the handle of the Thor's hammer there And uh, I outfitted him with the, uh, I guess, the old school uh, helmet that he used to wear. As opposed to the, you know, the new Thor who, you know, doesn't really wear a helmet, I guess. Alright, so we are in the lines or pencil stage and we want to keep our, our strokes super tight. And our artwork really clean. So that it's very, very, very predictable for the anchor to follow you and know exactly what you want. For the longest time, I didn't know what the little strap was on the bottom of Thor's hammer. Yeah, I didn't realize what that was for. He used it to hang it on his belt or whatever. Because I didn't read Thor comics when I was a kid. I wasn't very interested in Thor when I was a kid. It was actually not until the movies that I actually thought Thor was a cool character. Not even, not really the first Thor movie because the first Thor movie was just, it just wasn't that great. I liked Dark World a little bit more, but I certainly liked uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok was the best, probably the best and one of the best, if not the best in the, the whole Marvel MCU. So I did use stencils for those uh, little circles on his chest there for those haters out there. Thinks that I'm cheating. You know... People think that using a tablet and, you know, doing digital art is cheating. And I guess, you know, I mean, there are some advantages to using uh, a tablet and doing digital art. As in, you can mess up a hundred times and, you know, you can, you know, sort of rasterize the image and make it to where you can actually, you know, instead of erasing and redrawing stuff, you can actually just you know, circle it with this pen and just have certain sections of the of the digital art bigger, smaller, if you get the proportions wrong. And you know, there's a lot of advantages. But, you know, it's a tool just to create, you know, competent art, just like anything else, you know, just like using a stencil or using a uh, tracing paper or using a ruler, you know. And they're just tools to, to make your work clean. You know, I have respect for people that use traditional mediums, pen, Pencils, papers, pens, and inks. Uh, I just, you know, I don't, I don't like the mess of inks. I don't like the having to buy, you know, uh, heavy weighted paper and having to buy pencils and having to sharpen it. And the tablets were just a dream for me. You know, when they actually um, refined the applications that actually allow you to do this type of work on a tablet. Because when I first started doing digital work, it was on an iPad uh, way back when. And, oh man, it was just an awful experience trying to create something on that thing. And then I got a, um, a Wacom tablet, in, or a Wacom, uh, I guess, monitor. And it's just a really expensive drawing monitor. And it, it was, it too was, it was okay. But there was, 
it just wasn't uh, as accurate as the Apple Pencil and the iPad that I'm using now. All right, so we're doing inks, and uh, we want to keep this uh, the line super tight. Uh, this is the final product before it goes to colors. So, as you notice, I used the old school uniform or outfit for Thor, the, uh, the long hair, and the, of course the uh, Norse mythological helmet that he's got there with the wings on the side. It's nothing that you see in the more modern movies, but I don't know. I I guess I'm just I, I like the nostalgic look of comic book characters more than I like the I guess sort of modernized look of comic book characters, and that's not always the case. Sometimes I like the modern. But I think there's a huge market for the nostalgic look, or at least the nostalgic feel of these new movies that are coming out. Because the, the movie Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok, was actually done in a sort of Jack Kirby style of architecture in the city of Sakaar. The color palette and the, I guess, look of the city itself was meant to be a nod to Jack, Car Jack Kirby's uh, comic book art. I typically like to draw Thor with a really tall chest and a really sort of wide berth across the uh, upper body because unlike uh, characters like Spider-Man whose, whose emphasis is their physique and their dexterity and their flexibility, Thor is meant to represent just sort of brute strength. He's the strongest Avenger, supposedly. And uh, so you get this gigantic chest that represents this sort of I don't know, just massive armor plate in front of him that's sort of impenetrable and, you know, just unstoppable. So, <laughs> which makes the his appearance in Endgame all that much more hilarious because he goes from this, you know, finely tuned physique of, you know, just brute strength to this fat couch potato. <laughs> I mean, you're just like, uh, even in the end when he had his full uniform on, they still had him with that belly on there and it's just, it was just hilarious. All right, guys, remember your three P's, persistence, patience, perseverance. That's how you mature in any endeavor. Hey, guys, if you like my content, please like or comment below. And if you want regular updates, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.